It's been a month since a New Year's Day police chase in Monona ended in a crash that killed three people. Well, since then, the conversation around police chase policy in our communities has only grown. And now one couple who knows the risks of a high-speed pursuit firsthand is finally ready to tell their story. And if you ask them, the pursuit isn't worth the price. Braden Ross shares their story. Every time it happens, it's a reminder of that night. All it takes is one headline, and Dom Esqueda feels like he's back behind the wheel, his wife Gina in the passenger seat. We were about two blocks from home. Not knowing July 8th, 2023 would become a night they would never forget. That moment where that car was heading at us head on, that feel of, oh my gosh, like, brace yourself, we're about to get schmucked. It was just, you know, chaos. I mean, she was screaming in pain. Um, I saw lights, and so immediately I thought fire, and I started screaming at her to get out of the car. Um, turns out that if those lights were the police chasing them. The crash came after a 60-second chase. <coughs> the Maple Bluff police officer had tried to stop the SUV that hit the Escuetas for speeding. You can see in his dash cam video, the officer reached speeds of almost 100 miles an hour trying to catch up to it. But by the time she did... It was kind of black and just in and out until I actually got to the emergency room. I was healthy, nothing wrong, working, able to take care of my family, um, and woke up with an ostomy bag. It's one of the worst case scenarios when it comes to pursuit outcomes, but it's common. The data uh, are, are pretty clear that about 35 to 40% of these pursuits result in a collision. Jeff Alpert has been studying police pursuits across the country for 35 years, interviewing both officers and the suspects that run from them. One of the things when I teach police to consider these, these pursuit issues, I always ask them, how would you feel if your 16-year-old daughter were injured in a pursuit uh, that one of your fellow officers was chasing for a stolen car? Both Monona and Maple Bluff's policies leave the decision of whether to start a chase up to each officer in each situation. That's compared to Madison Police's more restrictive policy that says officers can only start a pursuit if they believe the driver is involved in a violent felony. I think it's a flex, you know, between departments like, well, you're not going to chase, you're not going to. We will. We'll get them. In 2023, Madison police engaged in 29 pursuits. In that same year, Monona police and Maple Bluff police nearly doubled that number each. In a statement to News 3 Now, Maple Bluff Police Chief Tanner Nystrom emphasized that the car that hit the Esquitas was already driving recklessly prior to the accident, adding, quote, our pursuit policy is designed to enhance public safety and minimize the inherent risks of apprehending offenders whose actions left unaddressed present an ongoing threat to the safety of our communities. But Alpert and the Esquitas say they'd like police to reconsider if that threat outweighs the one presented by a chase. No one's saying you can't initiate a traffic stop, but once they flee, now, now you're responsible for them. They're looking in their rearview mirror for you, and once you terminate, it's very likely they're going to slow down. I don't know this for sure, but it seems like it's almost a game, right? Like, let's see if we can get in a chase and if we can get away. Five months later, Dom and Gina are still picturing themselves in the front seat of that car. I wish I was back to just normal, just normal day to day. Just be able to get in a car, drive, not have to worry about how I'm gonna feel, if the pain's gonna get too much. They hope their story will be a wake up call for police to put a stop to those reminders. I hate to say like, just let a, a criminal go, but you know, it, it's not really worth it. Reporting in Madison, Braden Ross, News 3 Investigates. And you can read the full investigation online right now at channel3000.com.